are my 1099s double counting my income? And where do I enter my income in TurboTax? Aloha friends, Amanda here from The Business Finance Coach, where I'm simplifying finances and helping you grow your self-employed work into a business. Welcome to my tax series. In today's video, I'll be doing TurboTax and we'll be entering your income and 1099s. Be sure to check out my other videos in this series. TurboTax is a high-end tax software, but I'm also covering mid-end like Tax Act and a low-end, which is actually free if you're self-employed and with a 1099 called Free Tax USA. And I'll be doing comparison videos at the end. So in the desktop software, you'll actually have this business tab. I'll click continue and I'll choose what I work on to get to the main listing. If TurboTax is confusing at first, just click around a little bit because it's really not that confusing. It gets simple very quickly. If you're on self-employed, you won't have a business tab and a personal tab. Instead, you'll just have the options over here on the left and you'll click federal taxes and then you'll click income and you'll scroll down to self-employed business income and expenses, just like here we have business income and expenses. So you'll click update if you've already set up your business like we did in the profile setup video. So you can see there's no gross income, no net income. We just set the business up in that first video. So now I'm gonna click edit this business and this is where we'll enter everything for this business. And if we need to change any of the basic information that was in this business profile. So now I'm gonna come into business income and you can always click these learn more buttons in any DIY tax software and this will save you so much time and headache. Like if you're wondering what to do, just take some time, read these, they do answer the questions. Any income you receive from selling products or services you provide. This income may be reported on forms you receive from clients or customers, such as Form 1099 Miscellaneous. Once you've entered your business income, we'll start looking for deductions. And this is why, guys, so I'm going to click this Start button. This is why my business spreadsheet template walks you through catching up your income and expenses for 2017. It's specifically designed for those of you who didn't keep track during the year, because I know there's a lot of you out there. So be sure I'll link that spreadsheet template. If you haven't done that training, be sure to use it to get all of your records cut up. Because if you do that first, then it makes it so much easier to do this step. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, you'll see that there's four different sections here. 1099 miscellaneous income, which is where you enter your 1099s. General income, which is any income that you received. Other income, which is very uncommon. Something not to do with your self-employed work. You'll rarely use this. I won't even go into this one. Money you gave back to customers. This you will also rarely use because usually you wouldn't have it in your, your income. It would have been subtracted from a 1099 miscellaneous and you would most likely in your records subtract it out because you had to pay it back. So if you're tracking how much money you made, you're gonna subtract what you had to pay back. So in that case, you don't report that here. When this would really matter is if your business got really big and you were tracking refunds separately, you know, and then you just reported refunds and total income. The other place it could affect you is if you did work for someone in a prior year and for whatever reason you returned some of their money. So you paid taxes on their money. You entered it for your income last year and you had to give some back the next year. That's when you could use this income you gave back. So let's just go into the 1099s. Now this is only for 1099s. Yes, I have them, no I don't. So we'll say yes. And this is only, you'll say who paid you, company, the payer's ID or their social security number, only one. Now you should have box seven, non-employee compensation. And again, you can click these to double check anything you have a question about. So we'll say we were paid uh, let's do 70,000. Oh, let's say, let's say we were paid 20,000 on 1099 miscellaneouses. 
And that's usually all that's on them, so continue. And that's it. Let's say we just got one form from one company. Now, you don't enter 1099K here. 1099Ks became popular last year. And 1099Ks are a form that is reported by the credit card agency or whatever, um, like oftentimes a lot of freelancers will use different sites online that are really like a matching of people who want services with giving the services, but they're ultimately just a payment processor. A lot of those types of businesses are having to issue 1099Ks which is really their requirement to the IRS for payment processing. So you don't actually enter your 1099K, you just include that amount in your general income because if you tracked all your income and expenses, you would have included those amounts. Now you should of course check any form you get that it's right, if it's not, send it back to the issuer. A lot of small businesses aren't very good at their finances, so definitely don't take their word for it. Track your money and have them correct anything that's a mistake. So then we'll go into this general income, and this is where in my business spreadsheet template where I walk you through updating your 2017 accounting records, I explain that you can do one income type or you could break it out. If you do different types of services, it might be easiest to break it out by the type of service. You should break it out by whatever's most convenient for you to get your records organized and that you want to look at the totals from. And if you only have a few clients, maybe you keep track client one, client two, client three. You could enter that here. It doesn't matter what you enter for the description. It's however you want to keep track of it. So we could go 10,000 and you could of course add all this up. Now obviously these people probably should have issued you. If this example was real, these people should have issued us Form 1099 miscellaneous is because they paid over 600. However, it's not your job to make other people follow the rules. And if you file and they issue you a 1099 miscellaneous later, as long as you included the income in here, you don't need to amend your return. Just be sure to have your records and have the form and you already filed. If you corrected it, you would move the money out of here, put it up here, and it would have no effect on your return. So there's no actual need to amend, um, but you would just need to respond to the IRS and show them that, hey, I included it in my general income. Okay, so that's it for income. You press continue, boom, done. So thanks for watching. Be sure to check out my business spreadsheet template if you need help getting your records caught up. Be sure to check out the other videos in this tax series, whether you're looking to do your taxes yourself or you're looking to understand and get your stuff organized to give to an accountant or CPA. Either way, this can be helpful. I am an EA, which means I have a distinction through the IRS to file all types of business returns. So I do know what I'm talking about. I've done taxes for big business, public accounting firms. I started in venture capital companies, which are pyramid partnerships, extensive business returns, and I love business returns. So I'll be getting to the more complicated returns after this self-employed series.